Lost Ark already has legions of followers, but over here in the US, the game is still building a full head of steam for an official launch in 2022. Hey there, friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome to Legacy Gaming. Today, I'm breaking down five things you absolutely need to know about Lost Ark. Livid and I spent dozens of hours playing the Lost Ark closed beta. We wrote down notes, started creating builds, and ultimately wrapped our heads around what we both think will be an incredibly successful game. That being said, there is a ton of information to break down, and unless you like sitting through multiple 30-minute videos, it's nearly impossible to absorb it all in a short period of time. That's why we put together this video, to really highlight five key things we think potential players need to know about the game. This is a gateway video. Maybe something here will spark an interest in the game and you can venture down that YouTube rabbit hole we've all fallen down before. With that in mind, let's dive into the first topic. I can't think of a better place to start than at the beginning. Lost Ark feels like an old school MMORPG but with a top-down twist. While many games in the past few years have moved away from the class system, Lost Ark almost seems to double down on that idea. Not only do you choose a class, but you also choose a subclass, and both are permanent decisions. There's no beating around the bush. This is an old school way of thinking, but in my eyes, it sets up a stronger player identity and connection with their characters. I understand the appeal of classless games. It's all about flexibility, the flexibility to do and play however you want. But by breaking apart the silos that make players unique, you end up getting a whole sea of players that all kind of look, act, and function the same way. I can't think of a better example of this than New World. Sure, the weapons determine the playstyle, but you'll be hard-pressed to look at anyone in that game and really feel any strong connection to the character. Lost Ark has the opposite problem. Because you have to make multiple decisions about your character, everything ties into that identity you establish at the beginning. For me, I spent most of my time in the game on a paladin, one of the most established archetypes in video games today. Everything I did felt directly linked to that idea. Abilities all tied into wielding a sword or dealing holy magic, and every time I picked up a new piece of loot, I felt I was getting bigger and more regal pieces of plate armor. Forcing players to make decisions is important because it helps differentiate the overall experience. If anyone can be anything at any time, there's no individuality, just a ton of flexibility, and while that sounds nice on paper, the way it plays out in a video game ends up being far less impressive. Lost Ark taps into the old-school nostalgia a bunch, and whether it's questing in a certain region or running through a quest hub, you'll recognize that things aren't designed too different than they once were. There's a good chance a number of people will dislike this, a certain crop of players that expect each and every game to evolve and change the very fabric of video games. But for the rest of us, we few who are clamoring for the next great MMO experience, there's something familiar to latch onto. There's no doubt, Lost Ark is just as grindy as any other MMO out there, but that's a staple of the genre. The cool thing, in my opinion, is that Lost Ark has found a way to make that old school experience feel new. It really boils down to two things, combat and instanced content. Both things absolutely blew me away during the beta, and after years of playing video games and a few years covering them professionally, I was actually pretty floored that something could wow me to such a degree. Let's start with the combat. It's smooth buttery smooth, and no matter what class I played, I felt intimately connected to my avatar swinging swords or wielding spells, cutting down anything and everything that stood in my way. We actually released a huge 18-minute video where we broke down our full thoughts on the combat, as well as a great many other systems, so if you're so inclined, give that a watch. Combat feels great. Have I said that already? Not only does every subclass get a wide variety of moves to use, but they all feel impactful, and they're all wonderfully animated. One of the real selling points is the lack of copy-paste abilities. The Smilegate team really wanted to make each class feel different through their moveset, and man, they just nailed this aspect of the game. I think back to my time in WoW and how often I would feel like moves were just copied over from class to class, retouched a bit, and called new. That's just not the case in Lost Ark, and while there's always going to be some crossover, the attention to detail and the actual effort the devs put into making each class feel unique goes a long way to establishing a combat system that feels incredible. When I really stopped to think about why I connected with Lost Ark so quickly, I realized that the combat was always the first thing that came to mind. It's simply the best action combat experience you will have in a game, full stop. And until someone brings something else to the table and convinces me otherwise, Lost Ark is at the top of the mountain, at least for now. 
Lost Ark speaks to me as a player because it blends a ton of old school elements with new school action, and as someone that's grown up in the heyday of MMORPGs, this resonates with me as a player. The top-down perspective may be a turnoff to some more traditional MMOers, but the truth is, the gameplay is there, the systems are there, and the experience is there. Combat is all well and good, but we all know that using that combat to kill a million pointless mobs isn't very engaging. That's where Lost Ark's dungeons come into the picture. Look, I've done about 50,000 dungeons and raids in my 20 plus years of playing video games, but I have never experienced anything like I did in Lost Ark. It's not that the developers are changing up the formula or doing something massively different, but what they do manage to accomplish is create experiences that feel bigger and more elaborate than the questing and grinding in the overworld. This all really came to fruition in one particular story dungeon, and while I won't ruin anything for you guys, it was a clarifying moment where I literally sat back in my chair, took a deep breath, and just let it wash over me. It's not that I was engrossed in the story or anything nerdy like that, it was that they managed to truly immerse me in the world around, elevate it, and all while showcasing the incredible combat we just talked about. Here's the real kicker. This was just a progression dungeon, something you do one time while leveling and move on from. Dungeons only get bigger and better, and once you reach the end game, well friends, that's where things really start to pop off. At launch, the premier endgame experience will be Abyss Dungeons. These are small group dungeons that mirror the incredible leveling dungeons, but ramp the difficulty up to 11. And the NAEU will be starting at Tier 1, but there are three tiers of content already established in the Korean version of the game. Bottom line, more is coming. The dungeons impressed me, but the thing that really blew me away were scenarios, individual instance content that blended storytelling with dungeon-style combat. Sometimes you'll be fighting giant demons, other times you'll be engaging in a small narrative section, but these scenarios manage to always elevate my gameplay experience, connect me with characters, and ultimately provide me with some of the most memorable moments during my Lost Ark leveling process. Scenarios are abundant, and you'll do dozens by the time you reach level cap. It was a bite of content I never knew I needed, but now that I've experienced it, I don't think I can ever go back. One thing I didn't really appreciate until I reached level cap was how many little systems accompanied the major systems within the game. Everyone is used to leveling up, dungeon diving, and taking part in PvP, but things like sailing to mysterious islands and building individual relationships with a rapport system are newer experiences that feel relatively fresh given the landscape of MMOs. I really came to enjoy all of the little experiences I could have if I so choose. That's a big deal for me because I don't want to be forced to do anything, especially content that many would consider to be optional. Most things in the game are capped, which means you only can do them a certain amount of times per day. While that may sound a bit strange, it's actually a well thought out system that encourages you to create and level alts and play through all of the content available, again, if you so choose. I don't think there's anything here that really blew me away. No one singular system that made me go, wow, that's groundbreaking. But the magic is how all of the systems tie together to further your ultimate goal, increasing your gear score and gaining access to harder content. Just a few examples of optional content players can do at level cap are Una's tasks, which are basically daily world quests, building rapport with various NPCs and gaining rewards for leveling up your rapport, Guardian Rage, which are basically giant monster hunts, the Cube Dungeon, which is a bit more like a randomized chaos dungeon, the Tower of Shadows, where you fight to climb higher in the tower to claim better prizes, cooperative sea voyage missions where you do mini games with other people in the world, and life skills that essentially feed into your stronghold for crafting and progression. Seriously, the list goes on and on, and while some of those things may not appeal to you, there's a little bit of everything for players to latch onto. Bottom line, there are a million little systems all interconnected with the major systems ready to engage players on day one, help them progress, and keep them locked into the world of Lost Ark long term. I've said it a few times now in multiple videos, but Lost Ark isn't a brand new game with no apparent plans for the future. Oh no. The game is going into its third year over in Korea, second year in Russia, and shows absolutely no signs of slowing down. In fact, a number of systems have been added into those versions of the game, which will eventually make their way into the NAEU editions of Lost Ark. The one I really want to focus on is Raids. As a longtime World of Warcraft PvE nut, this is something that I think a lot of players need to know about. When you hear more content coming, you often think of new zones, maybe a couple new pieces of gear, nothing that fundamentally changes the game. Lost Ark is just built different. Raids are larger scale group content that takes incredible coordination and skill. This is where players will fight the toughest bosses, get the best loot, and most likely spend the most time dying. 
The crazy thing is, this is a system that was deployed after launch, a crazy expansion on the game's already vast endgame content. You may think, okay, raids are just larger dungeons, and while you're kind of right, you need to realize the level of complexity and depth some of these encounters have. Raids will cater to an incredibly hardcore crowd, but for right now, I don't actually care about the raids themselves. I want to get back to my main point, that three years of content have already been developed and will help Lost Ark not only get out of the starting gate in the NAEU, but will provide players with a constant stream of newness as the title gains steam, develops a player base, and hopefully wins over a new chunk of fans. The price tag can often be the difference maker when it comes to buying a game or not, and while free-to-play games have gotten a bad rap over the past decade, not all games can be painted with such a broad brush. The free-to-play model is just part of the world of gaming, and that's not changing anytime soon, so instead of getting upset about something we can't change, I choose to focus on the games that have no bar to entry and still provide players with a solid gaming experience. Lost Ark is a Korean-made MMO ARPG, which means there is a very different set of norms and tolerances for pay-to-win and pay-for-convenience features in the game. That's all being stripped away for the NAEU release of Lost Ark, and it's an essential step forward towards winning over those audiences. There is just no appetite for those sorts of systems in the West, and Smilegate and Amazon Game Studios knows that. There's a lengthy blog post up on the Lost Ark website I encourage everyone to read because they go into more specific details about what they're stripping away. Transparency goes a long way, especially when predatory practices are on the table. We knew going into the beta that some systems weren't going to be finalized, and we did get to test out how the premium currency would be used within the game. The biggest issues we can see are enhancements to your pets. By spending some crystals, a premium currency you will be able to collect in the game, you can enhance your pet upgrading them once and giving them access to random passive stat boosts. Upgrading them a second time and you get access to a number of utility perks like a mobile backpack, mailbox, etc. I personally don't mind this. I don't think those little things are going to upset any sort of meta balance within the game, but some people may still find issue with the interactions. What's really important about the free-to-play aspect of Lost Ark is just how much there is to do. If you thought you got your money's worth out of New World, a shallow and frankly mediocre MMORPG, you'll be delighted at how much content there is in Lost Ark already there waiting for you to engage in, and oh yeah, all for free. When all is said and done, we can't be entirely sure how the free-to-play model and monetization will be implemented come launch, but right now, I'd say worrying about it is a non-issue, at least until we can see how it plays out. So there you have it, five things you need to know about Lost Ark. Word on the street is that the game is releasing early in 2022 with no firm date quite yet. I've got to say, I'm just jonesing for more news. If you guys are excited about the game and enjoyed this video, do me a solid and hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It's still the best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. I'm also excited to announce that Legacy Gaming will be forming a Lost Ark Guild on day one. We've already welcomed dozens of new members into the fold over the course of the beta, but there is always room for new recruits, so be sure to join us on Discord and get hooked into our Lost Ark community. Finally, if you guys like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming and you'll want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.